ESA award winners here to honor them, have a little dinner and uh, have a little program in a few minutes. And we also will be, uh, tomorrow, uh, we'll be here and Mr. Shields will be addressing, oh, about 400 youth tomorrow morning as we go down to Warren, Pennsylvania. And uh, tomorrow afternoon, he'll be addressing an auditorium full of about 200 youth here uh, and talking about his book and we're excited about that tomorrow. But tonight, uh, welcome to the Robert H. Jackson Center. This is a truly a wonderful place and there's, uh, you saw a glimpse of the history maybe before you go tonight. Uh, if you leave, you can uh, take a look around and see a little bit more. We'd be happy to do that with you. And before I get started, we have exits here and here. I feel like this is my stewardess talk, okay? <laughs> this way, the exits, we have that. And if you get a chance, silence your cell phone. That would be great so it doesn't go off. Okay. There's a few thank yous I wanted to talk about. And in each year, well, let me talk, start with this. Each year, the center partners with the Law, Youth, and Citizenship Program of the New York State Bar Association and area sponsors to bring a young adult author to the center in collaboration with the, in, in celebration of the important contributions young people, young people's literature makes to lifelong literacy, education, and good citizenship. Now, in its ninth year, we are pleased to welcome this year's featured author, Charles J. Shields, author of Mockingbird, a portrait of Harper Lee, who will be, who will be delivering two presentations tomorrow as I said, to over 500 students. And I'll tell you a little bit more about uh, Mr. Shields in just a few minutes. In conjunction with the author presentation, middle school students were invited to take part in a statewide essay contest on Harper Lee's To Kill a Mockingbird. Three essays were chosen and will be recognized this evening. But let me tell you a little bit first who our sponsors are. And we always do this because these are the people who help make this possible. They provide support, they provide the money for us uh, to make this make this work. The Law, Youth, and Citizenship Program with the New York State Bar Association, Schultz Management Group, Bloomquist Landscaping, Campbell and Shelton Law Firm, Double A Vineyards, Evans Discount Liquors and Wines, Jamestown Mattress, Safety Compliance, Serta Mattress, Shawbucks Press Room and Restaurant, Southern Tier Pediatrics, and the Weinberg Financial Group. And we also get support from the Stanley A. Weeks, Robert H. Jackson, at Robert H. Jackson Fund, and the Paul W. Sandberg Fund, which is with the Chicago Region Community Foundation. And a few thank yous. First of all, Paul Lombardo. Paul, you, a lot of you met Paul. Paul's right here in the middle. <laughs> to make this program happen, coordinating everything from the essays to our visits to our trips, to picking people up. Paul, thank you very much. You do a great job. To, uh, I want to also thank Martha Nordstay, Nordsey, sorry. That's right. <laughs> Director of Law, Youth, and Citizenship Programs with the New York State uh, Bar Association for coordinating our essay contest. And thank you to Dr. George Gregory, who is with the New York State Bar Association. The BOCES Business. <laughs> Learning or vid and video conferencing service. And I'd also like to thank the center staff who's here this evening Liz Jones, Sonia, Sonia Montenmeyer, and Marion Beck Beck Marion Beckery. And our volunteers are also very important, and we have a lot of, <laughs> we have a lot of help from some volunteers, including Ann Cole and Scott Sawyer, who uh, did a lot today for us. So thank you. And all, any other volunteers that were helping out. I would like to now introduce to you our three winners of the statewide essay contest. The judges had many excellent essays to choose from, and these three selections rose to the top. The essays were written about Harper Lee's To Kill a Mockingbird. When I call your name, would you please come up and stand by me? First, I'd like to have Aria Roberts. Aria is a first place winner, and Aria is an 8th grade student at Casey Middle School in the Williamsville School District in Erie County. Aria is here this evening with her mom, Sue Jatha, and her brothers, Kathan and Baskar. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
I am going to read a brief piece from each of our essay winners. And from Arias, I'm going to read her opening paragraph. Equality has long been a struggle for African Americans. To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee describes this struggle through the eyes of a young girl using her innocence to expose an issue that is both simple and complex at the same time. In the story, Atticus Finch defies societal customs and expectations by defending an African American man who is accused of a violent crime. Atticus Finch challenges racism and discrimination not by protesting or activism, but simply by doing his job and living his life. So I present to you our first winner this evening, Arya Roberts. Our second winner tonight is Della Knapp. Della. Della is from Williamsville, New York, in Erie County, and is an eighth grade student at the Hine Middle School in the Williamsville Central School District. Della is here this evening with her parents, Jamie and Philip. And let me read a little bit from you. I'm also going to read Della's opening paragraph. Harper Lee's To Kill a Mockingbird tells the story of controversy and strength. Specifically, one man's courage to take a stand against the forces of racism and discrimination. This book is about Atticus Finch's attempt, through Tom Robinson's trial, to protect the due process of law and the basic civil rights, especially the right to a fair trial by jury. The message affects many people's lives, including mine, and touches everyone in a different way. So, congratulations. Our third award goes to Crystal Grindley. Since the publication of Mockingbird, a portrait of Harper Lee, Mr. Shields has spoken to thousands of readers across the country and abroad. His biography of Ms. Lee, the first ever published, became a New York Times bestseller, and it was a literary guild selection and a Book of the Month Club alternative. His young adult biography of Harper Lee, I Am Scout, was chosen, at, chosen as an ALA best book for young adults, a Bank Street Best Children's Book of the Year, and a Junior Literary Guild selection. In 2011, Mr. Shields published, And So It Goes, Kurt Vonnegut, A Life, and a New York Times and a Washington Post notable nonfiction book of the year. Because of the excitement and controversy over the announcement of the publication of Harper Lee's new book, Ghost Set Watchmen, Mr. Shields has been interviewed by the BBC, PBS, New York Times, Washington Post, Los Angeles Times, Al Jazeera America, and the Associated Press. And with the advent of social media, people, people knowledgeable about Miss Lee as a beginning writer have recently contacted him with new information not available to him when he was researching the biography. 
Mr. Shields is considering revising his 2006 work to include this new chapter in Harper Lee's life. Currently, he's writing his, the first biography of John Williams, author of Stoner, and the National Book Award winning Augustus. He and his wife live in Charlottesville, Virginia. Please welcome Mr. Charles Shields. Well, I had a delightful dinner because uh, I was speaking to three unusual ladies, all of whom you saw up here, and the topic was books. And we covered the waterfront, Harry Potter, and um, uh, To Kill a Mockingbird, and To Catcher of the Rye, Twilight, Hunger Games, and they had a lot of really interesting insights into these books. And it was also quite, uh, to me, as a former high school English teacher, I was very pleased to see that their taste was not all the same. In other words, they didn't all agree as eighth graders that this was a good book. Or they didn't all agree as, as young women that this was a good book. Uh, they have developed their own tastes in reading. They have their own standards in reason, reading. They expect certain things from authors. And that critical sense is really important to develop in readers so that they can tell a good book from a bad book and a book that's worth committing to your heart and another book that's worth laying aside and saying, I don't believe it, or that's not for me. Speaking of not believing it, while I, we were downstairs, I happened to see an arti artistic rendering on the wall of the gate over the Dachau concentration camp, which says, Arbeit macht frei. Forgive my German, but it means work will make you free. Don't believe it. It's a lie. It's a lie that despots and tyrants tell. It's one of many lies. The implication is that you can earn approval or be found worthy as a human being according to certain criteria. That you can be found worthy because of your faith. Or you can be found worthy because of your gender. Or you can work yourself into a state of being acceptable. All human beings are acceptable. The only thing that will make us free and keep us free is justice. And this is one of the reasons that The Kill a Mockingbird is still read 50 years after its publication. Why 100,000 young people a year read it. Why it's required in two-thirds of American high schools. First of all, it's just a good story. There will always be a place on library shelves for a good novel where you can enter into the lives of the characters and care what happens to them. Secondly, we read it because it deals with one of the most important human questions that we all have to deal with, which is how to get along with people who are different from us. And as Scout finds out at the <coughs> end, you don't just merely tolerate people, you don't merely just put up with people, but you advocate for them and you befriend them. You see them as not the other, but as a fellow human being who deserves your respect. In the very last page of To Kill a Mockingbird, Scout stands on Boo Radley's porch and says, I never saw my street from this perspective. And that is a metaphor for this is how Boo sees the world, even though you, old, you live on the same block. How he sees the world and how you see the world may not be the same, but this is your community. This is your neighborhood. The sun comes up on this street at the same time every day for the both of you. And the third and final reason why To Kill a Mockingbird is still taught is because of this. Like all great literature, To Kill a Mockingbird reads you as you read it. In other words, it asks you, could you do this? Could you be an Atticus? If people told you that your children were going to be ridiculed at school because of a stand you were taking, would you still do it? If your brother came to you and said, you don't have to take this case, this career isn't going to do you any good, Think about the, you know, what it's going to do to our family. Could you still do it? There are Atticuses everywhere. There are Atticuses on school boards. There are volunteer firefighters. There are teachers, nurses, veterinary assistants, all kinds of people in every walk of life who do the heavy lifting for the rest of us because they stand up when they see that something is wrong. And they may not use the same word, but what they care about is justice. And we can become part of that, that family of people who seek justice by extending it to others in our everyday lives, to treating people all the same way, to giving them all the same kind of respect, even if we don't receive it in return. 
Nevertheless, we can be champions of justice, just like Addis Kiss Fitch. So don't believe that sign down there, work will make you free. It's a lie, and despots will tell it. Only believe that justice for all people is the only true thing.